Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. And Linda. And Gizmo. Hi, Gizzy. <laughs> I think he wants to join us. Oh, here he comes. We're the Village's newcomers, and we bring you topics of interest to villagers, people that want to live in the villages, retired people everywhere, and we're glad you're with us today. Today, first off, I think we want to celebrate this wonderful weather. Oh my gosh, it was a great day. We went out walking this morning about 7. It was 66 degrees. It's up to 70 now on the way up to 83 or 4. 82 today. 82, so lovely day. To make it even better, it's Saturday. It's game day. Oh yeah. Notre Dame Fighting Irish are playing today, and I always look forward to that. In fact, I gear up for every game. Do you guys do that? Do you gear up? <laughs> he gears up. For home games, I wear my my blue jersey. For the away games, I wear the white jersey. Yeah, he's ready. And uh, I will be ready to help him. Sometimes I cross my fingers, and if it's a really big situation, I'll try to cross my toes. Will you have your hat on, too? I will wear my hat. <laughs> Go Irish. We want to take a moment to uh, send some well wishes to uh, Sue and Skip Smith. Right. We saw that Sue is under the weather a little bit, and we sure hope you have a quick, speedy, and complete recovery. That's right. We really enjoy hearing from you folks out there. And boy, we really enjoy it when you send us things like this awesome spam shirt. Check this out. <laughs> is that the coolest shirt ever? We got that as a gift. And that's from Mark and Lisa Middleton, and they are from Liberty Township, Ohio. Mark works for Hormel and... Spam. You know, I feel like spam sometimes, you know, uh, underappreciated. Oh. <laughs> I say spam's like the beautiful girl that lives next door, but nobody asks her out on a date. She's too available. You know, she's right there. But spam, you can do so many things with it. Oh. Folks, give it a try. And no, I'm not paid in any way by spam. Although... Although we have about 10 cans in the cabinet, right? <laughs> we do. We do have spam. But I was going to say... We do not get paid by spam, but we are available, spam, <laughs> if you're out there watching. Kind of a sad day yesterday. It was. Very sad. We we sold our golf cart, our first golf cart. Yeah. And uh, it was a good cart, and we loved it. We sold it because we got that quiet tech that we showed you, the beautiful red, red one. one. yeah. We wanted to make our videos quieter for you. But yesterday, I had to deliver that cart to a, a really nice couple that bought it. They currently live in Kentucky, but they bought a courtyard villa up in Spanish Springs. So I delivered that yesterday. Right. She followed me up in the car. It was 13 miles and it took 55 minutes to drive up there in the cart. Never but stopped. Totally up there. Yeah, but I didn't follow you. I came later. Can you I, see me going really slow in my car? <laughs> it was about 27 minutes for her by car, but yeah. I told her wait about a half hour and then yeah. then head up there and I gave her the... Now, one thing I learned yesterday, those tunnels up north are not as big as the tunnels down here. I really felt like if my cart was wet, that it was going to get squeegeed when I went through that tunnel. <laughs> it was tight. Uh, and the, the, the pads are narrow up there. I think the developers learned something here as they move southward. They make those trails a little wider mm -hmm. and the tunnels a little taller. We even went through a tunnel with a kayak strapped to the top of our, our uh, cart. Yeah, that was earlier. Yeah, so, you know, the cart's gone. Uh, we look forward to adventures in our new cart. And we really appreciate that couple and hope they get as good a use from it as we did. Also yesterday, I came across something pretty disturbing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was heading down south to go to the Pitch and Putt, which is in Marsh Bend, the Marsh View Pitch and Putt, and uh, came across a bunch of carts gathered around the multimodal trail. And as I got closer, I saw that there was a bicycle. It was crushed, laying there on the side of the road, and a person was laying in the grass, flat. There were probably already 15 or so people standing around, so they didn't need any help. But I, I watched and I could see that there had been an accident. And uh, just a reminder that when you're on these multimodal trails, bicycles are totally okay on there. People cannot ride a bicycle as fast as a golf cart. These golf carts are going 20, 
supposedly the maximum. Some people have goosed theirs up to 23 or 24 miles an hour. The bicycles are going about 10 to 15 miles an hour max. And the carts get behind them and want to squeeze by and just reminding everybody to be really careful because when you go around somebody, you, you really make it tight in that lane. And I don't know what happened there and I don't know whose fault it was, if anybody's fault. But it's dangerous and we sure hate to see people laying there. The ambulance came while I was... Uh, while we were driving right past there. So I know he's taken care of and hopefully he's okay. But uh, it's a, you know, it's something to think about. Well, especially during this time because in it's October, the weather's cooler. There are so many more bicyclists right now. This morning going to the grocery, I know I saw at least 30 to 40 bicycles in groups and we just got to keep our eye out for them. Some of the, some people ride on the roads, perfectly fine. Some ride on the trails, that's perfectly fine. But wherever you are on a bike, I know you have to be careful, and we drivers have to be equally as careful. And wear a helmet. Yeah, wear a helmet and uh, share the road. And you know that we are consistently positive. In fact, we're accused of being too positive, uh, too pro-villages, pie in the sky, drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I like pie and I like Kool-Aid. Yeah. Know? But there are some things, and I wanted to keep it real for you and tell you about the pitch and putt. Told you we drove by that biker that was down going to the pitch and putt. And it was a hot day yesterday. I don't know how hot it was. It was in the high 80s, which is not as bad as many, many, many days here. But it was really hot on that golf course. The pitch and putt is an amazing little golf course. It's 18 holes. I would say the holes range from uh, 45 yards up to around 100 yards. So you don't take all your clubs. For me yesterday, I took a, a, a wedge, an eight iron, and a putter. That's all I took, and I was fine. There was one hole that I wished I had had a, a little bit longer club, but that's it. So you take three or four clubs. Don't even have to take your bag. When you go down there, you go to the window, you show your ID they will give you a little bag for $1 to rent. You'll leave your ID as collateral and they'll give you that. So you take your few clubs and you walk on this pretty course with lots of, of water, many ponds, little creek. It's very nice. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife down there. My gripe today is that it was hot and it is somewhat slow play. We were a twosome playing behind a foursome. These tea boxes are, are not in the shade generally. They're out in the bright open sun and there are no benches and there is no roof overhead. Now, ordinarily on a regular golf course, whether it's championship or even executive, you're, you have your golf cart. Right. When you get hot, you sit in your golf cart. You have shade over the top. Some people even have a fan in there. You have a place to store your drink. You may bring a couple of waters. You don't have that on the pitch and putt. You don't have the shelter. You don't have your drinks. You may not have your towels or a cooler. So you have to walk and there's nowhere to sit down. So it got really hot yesterday. It got so hot I didn't want to finish. I guess you could take a fanny pack with a bottled water. Yes, I often play golf with a fanny pack. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the only way you could take water unless you had something around and strapped around your neck. Well, neck. actually the little bag that they give you for dollars is cool. It's a cool little bag. It has a little pouch just right for one bottle of water. Oh, well, okay. You, that, did, you didn't know that. Well, I mean, that bottle of water by the second hole is warm water. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. So anyway, back to my original gripe. Villages, if you're listening, your average age of player is probably 60 to 70 years old, somewhere in between. You're walking 18 holes in the pitch and putt. Nowhere to sit down. Nowhere. Nowhere. It's hot. I felt so hot yesterday, I wanted to sit down. And what a fine specimen I am. <laughs> you can just imagine a normal person. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Kidding. Put some benches out there. Yeah. Put a couple of places out there where you get some, where you, in an emergency, if you got overheated, you could get some relief from the sun. That's true. You know, won't yeah. hurt. That Wouldn't would... cost much. You don't have to do it at all the courses because you've got your golf cart at the other ones. Right. This course in particular. 
It's a great course, though. It's a really nice place to hone your short game. Yeah. You're chipping, you're putting. And when you get done, you're right there at Edna's Food. In there. Or, or Edna's on the Green, where they have the food trucks. Right. Uh, you, can, you can eat, you can drink, you can be merry. <laughs> or Jerry. Can, or Jerry. You can be merry or Jerry. But uh, have a good time. But just take care of those people. We don't want anybody keeling over with a heat stroke. No. Do you have any gripes? Mm. <laughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> oh, I thought I went a while ago, but I can't remember. Uh, maybe, uh, yes, the rec centers, when you want to go to a certain uh, uh, exercise class, now, especially during the snowbird season, you have to get there very early, 7.30 for a 9 o'clock class, which means you have to leave your house by 7.15 if you're in the golf cart. And so that's early to get up to go to a 9 o'clock class. I just, that's a little bit of a gripe, but what do you... I, I mean, that's not happening for me. If I have to, if, if for a 9 o'clock class, I had to be, get up before... Seven. I don't know. I'm in the minority. I don't. I don't get up before seven usually. No. I'm like the 98th percentile here. Everybody's up and they've already done a lot of stuff. They're like the army. <laughs> they do more stuff by 8 a.m. Yeah. than I do all day. But uh, that's a gripe for me. Yeah. Because I'm not going to those classes now. I thought you meant it's a gripe that I don't get up until. Oh, I, I'm used to that. 42 years. I know when you're going to get up. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to a class if I have to get up that early and I have to go there and wait. So what can they do to, to help that? Help the villages out here. It's your chance. I don't know what they could do. I do. What? <laughs> you could have them when you go in, scan your card. Boop. You're the first person. You got a spot. They can only take maybe 40. Yeah, but you have to get there early there to get that spot then. Still. Well, then you get it there and you get the spot. Then you can go home and take a nap. Oh. You, can, you can go walking, <laughs> swimming. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Well, that's... Rather than stand in line for... An hour and a half. At some of the places, don't they put their gym bag down or their towel or their their cooler or a drink or whatever and, yes. and hold a place in line? Right. But I can't think of too many places on earth where that would really work. No. Because somebody would come in and just squeeze Scoo. in front of your little thing or scoot mm -hmm. your thing back or whatever. Yeah. But if you came in and checked in, boom, I'm number five. And you came in and said, I'm number 18. When that person came up and went to check in, they could say, hey, you're number 41. You don't make it. Right. We hope everybody out there is doing well and enjoying the fall weather. I know we are here. Yeah. Except there's allergy seasons coming. So I hope you all get your flu shots because of all the seasonal things are coming around now. And it just kind of gets, gets kind of worse in the fall. It does? Yes, it does. Allergies too? Yes. I, w I think we should do a show on allergies because some people... Yeah have allergies down here and some people don't. I had allergies in Indiana and I'm good down here. And then I've heard the opposite. I've heard some people say they ha didn't have them there and come down here and really have them. We'll have to do a little research. Maybe right. we can do a future. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, one thing we miss though is the fall foliage. Yes, we do. Indiana has some fantastic fall foliage. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we miss that down here, but we certainly don't miss as our friend up in uh, Minnesota Mike Kalseth sent us a picture yesterday of sleet all in snow oh. all over his car. We don't miss that part. <laughs> no. I'm willing to sacrifice the colored leaves. Yeah. For that. S standing out in the yard raking for hours or blowing the leaves for hours. And that's when your allergies really kick up. Don't have that here. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you like our videos, please hit that like button and then go over and boink that subscribe button and you'll be notified of all our future videos. Until next time. See you when you get here.